Hello and welcome to Moments with the Master for this 13th day of December 2021. I'm the Egg Friar from St. Martin's Celtic Catholic Church in Concord, North Carolina. Joined with my brother Christopher in Olean, New York. Say hello, Chris. Hello, Chris. Very nice. Lol. Um, And we are looking at the readings from the, what is it, fifth Sunday of St. Martin's Lent. And they are... Mm -hmm. As Real if, quick before you do that, yes. Uh, about about law, have you? Um, were you on White Book when 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 the law thing was going on? No. Uh, every time somebody would post law, I would put a picture of law from uh, <laughs> from Star Trek. Daughter. Yes. So they hated me. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Um, Zephaniah chapter three verses fourteen through eighteen. Um, Isaiah chapter 12, verses 2 through 6, Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7, and Luke chapter 3, verses 10 through 18. As always, we encourage you to read all of these on your own. Um, I am going to take a look at the Philippians passage, mostly because I just, I love it, but it is... um, it's one, it's funny, There's. this is one that, um, well, so there's a, There's an organization called Seeds, S-E-E-D-S, Family Worship, and what they do is they take scripture and they set it directly to music. They actually have inspired me because I do this pretty regularly for uh, students, for t- uh, kids who are trying to memorize the Bible, and um and so this passage, Philippians 4, uh, 6, and 7, which is part of this, is, um, is one of those songs. So, um, but anyway, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. That's another song, by the way. Rejoice in the Lord always. And I know it because that was an old song. Um, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let all men know your forbearance. The Lord is at hand. Have no anxiety about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So, what we have here. It's interesting to me, like, what this has to do with Advent per se. Um, Except that Advent is a time of rejoicing. Oh, you're bringing it to me now. Thank you. Just go ahead and set it right there. I appreciate it. My son brought me food. Um, So, it is a time of rejoicing as we prepare our hearts for the coming of Christ. But this this particular this particular passage, what is it? Well, it's a snippet of. It ends with this. Um, Will keep your hearts. Uh, the word actually is guard. Um, so it's like a recipe to have Christ or to have the Lord Yahweh guard our hearts. So real quick before yes. you before you get too much farther. One of the interesting things in, and, and and I don't know how this translates to other languages, but in Spanish, um, saving something, as in you are it's like saving money, mm-hmm. is guardar, which I assume comes from like G U A R D A R. Right. I I assume comes from the same root from which we get guard. I, I don't know if it's Latin or not, but right. that, that's my assumption. Um, and I wonder about, like, do you do you know what the um, Greek word from which the epistle was translated? Like, no, not off the top is, of my is, head. Is there is there is there some connection between guard, like guard your heart, or save, like save money, or keep? You know what I'm saying? Well, save. I mean, it's soter or save your. Um, but, well, yeah, but they're, they're saved like I am saving you, and then they're saved like I'm saving money. Yeah, um, I don't know if there's I, separate Greek the words same, there. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't know if there's separate Greek words. I don't know. Off the hip, I'd have to look that up. Um, but maybe we can look it up after we stop this one and pick up the next one. But um, but anyway, rejoice. So so what is the what is the recipe? All right, so how do we... 
have God guard our hearts in Christ Jesus? Well, here it is. First of all, we have to rejoice. Um, it, it, basically, to just have joy. And my my father uh, used to say when we would travel and sing together, and we would tell this funny story that joy is a it's not a product of your circumstances. It is a decision that we make. Um, we can have joy regardless of what is going on around us. And the thing is, um, in Greek thought, joy really was like it came out of, it was like the, the ultimate goal. Like you worked toward joy, and joy um, really was a product of your life. But, and so, because Greek thought is... Um, man-centric. Um, it starts with man. But Hebrew thought, everything is founded in God. Everything comes from God. So you can have joy regardless of what is going on in your life because your joy finds its roots in who Yahweh is, who God is, not in who we are or what is happening to us. Can I... Uh, throw something in there real quick because I hear this a lot um, th there's a lot of statements like Greek thought is man centric and I, I would agree that largely speaking Greek philosophy is man centric but I don't know that Greek thought is necessarily man centric however here's the interesting part there is very little like Greek broadly religious thought is very God's uh, plural centric but there's not a lot of joy in it. No. Um, the, 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 there's, there's not, I mean, you, you, you may or may not have created an exchange where the gods are actually going to live up to their word and help you out, but more than likely they're going to crush you for some scheme. It is that they're having among themselves or, you know, you, you know, Greek, Greek mythology. Right. Um, th there is, Regardless of whether it's man centric or God centric, there it God centric. There's little joy or peace to be had in uh, uh, Greek thought. Okay, continue. Well, and let's just be clear: the Greek gods were just humans. They were they were just people with superpowers. Um, that's it. There there was very little difference between. They had the same passions, the same. Basically, what the Greeks did, as did many other religions, was they just uh, created gods in their own image. Um, that was that was what I when I was writing about comics, the modern mythology. Uh, that was the premise of the of the paper. Mm -hmm. Yeah, polytheistic mythology is uh, divine beings with very human uh, impulses. Whereas, uh, and then we've replaced them with new gods, meaning the superheroes, which are human beings with divine-like powers. But mm -hmm. it ends up being the same thing. Yes. Well, and what's interesting to me, and, and we've gotten off on a tangent a little bit, but what's interesting to me is that, like, if you look back at, like, the golden age of comics, back in the early Superman and stuff like that, like, they were extremely... Um, moral is not the word I'm looking for, but kind of like that. Like they held high ideals and they always did the right thing. And in more recent times, like it is the most popular uh, movies and stuff show their flaws and um, like we don't want our gods, if you will, our, our heroes to be truly heroic. We want them to be like us. Um, anyway, but we are to rejoice, and it's interesting that Paul is saying this because Paul is writing this from prison. In fact, this is really close to the end of his life. And so he's telling us to have joy in the midst of all these circumstances. Then he goes on to say, let all men or let everyone see your forbearance, your ability to walk through this uh, difficulty because... The Lord is at hand. So again, we find we're able to stand firm and have joy because the Lord is near us. He is in the midst of what we're going through. Um, and we can trust in who he is. And then he goes on. Um, 
and I love the, the, the translation, the do not be anxious about anything, but in everything with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. So don't, he says, have uh, this translation, have no anxiety about anything, but in everything by prayer. So let's start. So don't have anxiety, which is an interesting thing because anxiety is truly an emotional reaction. And I tell people all the time, you can't help your emotions um, they are what they are, but you can certainly keep your emotions from running away from you. Um, it's like if you're and if you're riding a horse, and I, you know, years ago I used to ride um, somewhat regularly, and I loved riding horses. Um, if you're riding a horse and you're holding the reins, you know, you, the horse might get spooked by something, but you don't have to let the horse run away with you because you have the reins. Um, th with which you can control the horse. In the same way, um, we have reins. So we can't help be but be anxious or depressed or sad or whatever. Our emotions are what they are. But we don't have That's to... actually a really good metaphor in general. Like if you, if you, if you consider a horse to be uh, not just your emotions, but your, your appetites, your... Yes. Um, uh, all those parts of you that aren't necessarily bad, that steal your but joy. which can control you. Yes. Uh, and, and with a horse, I mean, they, they told us from the beginning, you, um, you, uh, you have to tell you have to show it who's boss. Right. Um, or else they will just, they will do whatever the hell they want. And you'll either be, you'll, you'll be sitting on the back of a, of a beast who's just grazing, sitting there, you know, <laughs> doing nothing, or they'll run away with you. Like you were saying. Yes. So it says don't have anxiety, okay? So what are the reins? The reins are, it says, with prayer. Um, and now, the word for prayer here just means general prayer. Now, to, to the Hebrew, prayer was not just about the action of prayer, but the act of um, recognizing your position before God um, and then coming to Him with proper respect is probably a good way to put it, but talking to God, communicating with God, having yourself in right relationship. But then it's interesting because it says prayer and supplication. So it's interesting that it adds this because this it's not just I'm falling before God on my face because he is God, but I'm also bringing to God my needs, my daily needs. Like uh, what is the what did the Lord, the prayer the Lord taught us? Give us our, this day our daily bread. I come to God with my needs and with my um, desires because God cares about that. It's not just that God sits on a throne and we worship Him, but God is our Father to whom we can come with our needs and requests. So the rain, it's prayer in one hand, supplication in the other, with thanksgiving, and thanksgiving being like the gloves that protect us when we hold those reins. I give thanks. In fact, it's, it's interesting because there's been a lot of research done with... Um, just with people in general, that people who are thankful tend to struggle less with things like depression and anxiety and stuff like that. So I give thanks, which goes back to joy. When I give thanks, uh, what is, there's a song in, um, oh gosh, what is it? The movie White Christmas that uh, Bing Crosby sings, um, um, when I'm restless and can't go to sleep, I count my blessings instead right. of sheep. And then I go to sleep counting my blessings. It's that kind of thing. You know, we can we can get wrapped up in what's going on around us. And then it says, with thanksgiving. So with all these things, let your requests be made known to God. So we bring everything to the Lord and the peace of God which passes all understanding. So when we do that, we get supernatural peace that makes no sense to the rest of the world will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So the seat of my emotions are guarded. So what's interesting is over time, you can train your emotions. Um, your hearts and your mind are guarded in Christ Jesus. Now, I want Christ to guard my heart and my mind. Um, and the way I do it is through rejoicing, 
and allowing people to see my forbearance because God is with me, not to let anxiety run away with me, but through prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, bring my request to God, and then God's peace, which passes all understanding, will guard me. So what does this look like? Um, I am certainly not a perfect example of anything, um, but we're walking through this, this cancer journey with Marilyn. Um, I was in Kuwait when she got the news, and I remember vividly, of course it was just a few months ago, but this was toward the beginning of August, and I called her as I did every day about 2 or 3 o'clock Kuwait time, which was um, in the morning um, in the States. And I got on the phone, hey, Maryland, how are you doing? She's like, well, and she had held on to that. She had gotten the diagnosis the day before. She waited for me to call her all night long and told me, I've been told I have cancer. And um, now there's a part of me that is just trained to deal with uh, pain and trauma because I'm a chaplain and I deal with stuff all the time. But I truly believe, like, in the moment, and this and this is what we discussed, like, although, you know, I don't want my wife to die, I don't fear her death, nor do I fear my death, because we live in Christ. And so we know what comes after. Um, and, you know, so, and, and as we were walking through this, one of the things that we talked about and that I told other people was, you know, we have the, we, we can either choose to live in fear or choose to live in faith. And we choose to live in faith. We, we can either fear or we can follow. And so we trust in God's sovereign will. We trust that God is not absent. Do we Are we bringing our request to God? Yes. I mean, we prayed for a lot of things. We prayed that she wouldn't need chemo and radiation. God chose not to answer that prayer. Um, well, he did. He said, yeah, she's going to have to walk through chemo and radiation. Now, we don't know all the end effects. We know that through this, she has been able to have conversations and have ministry. And so have I, by the way with people in a way that we have not before because we had not experienced the cancer journey before. Um, and that to me is, it, it's just funny, over the years as we have been through many, many difficult things, one of the things that we have had people, I've had people say to us more than anything else is watching y'all deal with this and walk through this and seeing how you've handled this um, has encouraged us and given us hope in our own things. And that to me is the point of this passage. It doesn't mean I've done it perfectly. I've been sad. I've thought, I've thought thoughts of death through various things before. Um, and so I am still learning to rejoice in all circumstances and have no anxiety and all that stuff. But, um, but I'm better at it today than I was last time, 10 years ago and last year. And hopefully 10 years from now, I'll be better at it than I am now. And that is my hope for you, is um, that the, the, the advent of Christ, the Messiah, who gives us hope of salvation and hope that he is the Lord of all things, good and difficult, uh, will bless you and give you the strength to allow walk through this and allow Christ to guard your hearts and minds. Got anything else? Uh, yeah, I, I, I wish you could end there, but I have kind of a question. Mm -hmm. um, you you said that you were better now at it than you used to be, and that that's one of the one of the things about um, the the way that we're supposed to be living in Jesus. Uh, it, like I, I hear a lot of people saying that 
God will give me the grace to live through this. And I don't disagree that that happens. But it seems to me that, like the way that you're phrasing it, and in my experience, that it's it's more of a skill that is learned um, through having to do it. Faith is a muscle. They, okay, that's that's actually the other thing. I, okay, yes, exactly. Okay, that was it. Yeah, faith is a spiritual muscle that we have to exercise, and... Um, and if you don't exercise it, then you won't. I, I gosh, I say this all the time to people, uh, especially as they're deploying. And I'm talking to, especially to the people who, are, you know, are Christians or going to church and stuff. It's like whatever it is that you do, do more of it, because what I see happen so frequently is people, you know, in the good times, they don't continue to practice their faith. They don't continue to trust. And then when they need it, it's not there. And um, yeah, so it's something we have to, it's, it's a, it's a, I think it's a spiritual muscle we have to strengthen. Um, and will God give us the grace to walk through things? Yes, um, but only in the measure that we choose to receive it. That's good, that's yeah. good. All right, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord, thank you for your um, protection. You're guarding our hearts and minds. Give us what we need to exercise our faith um, so that we can learn to rejoice and pray and trust in you. Amen.